There's no doubt about it, Starship Flight 11 is truly the greatest achievement for SpaceX so far. As the final launch before the seamless transition to Starship version 3 and the complete upgrade of Launch Pad 1, the company prepared for this mission with incredible precision, and the results speak for themselves. Booster 15 performed flawlessly, so well that if it had been configured for a Mechazilla catch this time, it likely would have succeeded. Meanwhile, Ship 38 not only fixed all the issues seen in Flight 10, but went far beyond that in almost every way. So, how exactly did this incredible flight unfold? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. I love Elon Musk and this incredible team. Go SpaceX! Those were the heartfelt, powerful words from COO Gwyn Shotwell. Dedicated to her boss and the entire Starship team she's been proudly working alongside. It was her way of celebrating what's being called the most impressive Starship flight of 2025, Flight 11. Elon Musk, unable to hide his excitement, simply said, Great work by the SpaceX team. The joy even reached NASA, where acting administrator Sean Duffy congratulated SpaceX on the remarkable achievement, stating, The progress SpaceX demonstrated with today's Starship test is critical for our Artemis missions. And indeed, there's a reason this flight is being praised as the most successful of the year. The atmosphere at Starbase said it all. A massive crowd of fans had gathered after work, their cheers echoing through the night as they watched the tense, heart-pounding moments unfold alongside the SpaceX team. Elon Musk himself was there too, smiling, relaxed, chatting with the live stream hosts. He knew this wasn't just another test flight. Every maneuver, every calculation had been fine-tuned for perfection. This was a special mission, one that marked a new chapter in the Starship story. When the countdown hit T-40 seconds, everyone held their breath. This is the moment that usually decides whether the launch proceeds or phases a short hold. But not this time. The conditions for Ship 38 and Booster 15 had never been better. The clock kept ticking smoothly. Four, three, two, one. The rocket roared to life as the water deluge system blasted hundreds of thousands of gallons of water per minute to dampen the extreme heat and shock waves from the 33 Raptor 2 engines, protecting the launch pad. And here's the most incredible part. All 33 engines fired at 100% thrust, with zero failures. Even more impressive, 24 of those engines were reused, and every single one of them performed flawlessly. The vehicle's speed climbed rapidly surpassing 1,000 kilometers per hour within the very first minute of flight before reaching max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure at an altitude of about seven kilometers. This is the moment when the booster endures the greatest stress from the combination of high velocity and thick atmosphere, and yet it passed through effortlessly. Quite the irony for something called super heavy. But wait, something seemed off when the camera switched to Starship's onboard view. At T plus 1 minute 13 seconds, a small corner of the black thermal protection tile appeared to peel slightly away. Thankfully, it stayed firmly attached and didn't cause any issues. By T plus 2 minutes 20 seconds, Booster 15 began venting liquid oxygen to chill the common dome, a process that takes about 20 seconds to prevent thermal shock during stage separation. Moments later, the separation was perfectly executed. The booster then ignited its engines for the boost back burn, tilting slightly to increase drag and slow its descent as it started the journey back to Earth. However, during the reignition sequence, one of the 13 center engines failed to light. This kind of issue is actually quite common and not a big deal. After all, the booster has 33 engines and the others can easily compensate. That's exactly why SpaceX prefers using many smaller engines instead of a few massive ones, like NASA's Saturn V did. Since this was Booster 15's second flight, all eyes were on it. At T plus 4 minutes 30 seconds, the live stream switched to a ground camera tracking the booster as it fell almost side by side with the hot staging ring, roughly 80 kilometers above Earth. At that point, the vehicle was descending incredibly fast, forcing it to vent excess propellant to reduce mass, keeping only the fuel necessary for landing. By 6 minutes 13 seconds after the flight, flames lit up once again, all 13 center Raptor engines successfully reignited to slow the descent. Even the engine that had failed earlier came back online, proving just how well SpaceX optimized this vehicle. Moments later, the engines throttled down to 5, then to 3, 
holding the booster almost perfectly steady in midair for a few seconds. This maneuver was a stability test, designed to simulate a soft landing on Mechazilla's arms. And honestly, Booster 15 nailed it. If it had been configured for a tower catch, it likely would have succeeded. But since this was the second reused booster in the Starship program, that SpaceX chose not to take that risk. Compared to Booster 14 on Flight 9, which exploded seconds after initiating its landing burn, this was a massive leap forward, solidifying Starship as the first rocket system in history with true full reusability potential. After burning through the remaining fuel, Booster 15 went into free fall and BOOM! It exploded upon impact with the ocean. But this wasn't an accident. The destruction was entirely planned. If it hadn't been, the crowd watching live from Starbase wouldn't have been cheering and clapping so wildly. Now, it's time to turn our attention to Ship 38, the final prototype of Starship Version 2. The vehicle successfully ignited all six Raptor engines to perform the hot staging maneuver, using thrust to separate from the booster. It then continued accelerating until, at T plus nine minutes, a few venting bursts occurred to release residual propellant trapped in the fuel lines, as Starship reached a speed of around 26,400 kilometers per hour. This marked the Seco phase, second engine cutoff, confirming orbital insertion at an altitude of roughly 150 kilometers. With all six engines shutting down simultaneously, the spacecraft entered a brief period of coasting through low Earth orbit. A few seconds later, the flaps began to move, adjusting the vehicle's attitude. When the camera switched to the flap view, it was easy to spot that several ceramic tiles in that area had fallen off, exposing the mounting holes beneath. At around 11 minutes and 10 seconds into the flight, the vehicle started showing unusual behavior. The glow near the aft section shifted from yellow to red for a few seconds before disappearing again. This wasn't the typical plasma glow, it was most likely flames escaping from one of the engines. Fortunately, no explosion occurred this time, unlike what happened during Flight 10 when a violent blast damaged Ship 37's aft flaps, tearing the structure and putting the entire vehicle at serious risk of failure. And now comes the most impressive part, Starlink deployment. Exactly 19 minutes and 50 seconds after launch, the payload bay door opened and a dummy Starlink satellite was gently released into space. It drifted away slowly, almost as if Starship were standing still, even though the vehicle was still traveling at incredible speed, 192 kilometers above Earth. This time, SpaceX once again stopped short of achieving a full orbital insertion, a bit of a shame, as Ship 38 clearly had more to give. The crowd erupted in cheers as the first mock Starlink glided away, followed by the second, third, all the way to the eighth. It took nearly six minutes to deploy all eight satellites, roughly matching the pace of Flight 10. Still, it was an emotional milestone. After nine long years of development, Starship has finally mastered the art of deploying Starlink. Congratulations, SpaceX. If you find this achievement as inspiring as we do, drop a Go SpaceX in the comments to show your support. Beyond payload deployment, SpaceX also achieved another crucial milestone. At T, plus 37 minutes and 54 seconds, they successfully reignited one of Starship's sea-level Raptor engines in space. This kind of progress perfectly illustrates how SpaceX continues to push the boundaries of Starship's capabilities with every single flight. It gives fans even more confidence that the dream of reaching Mars is inching closer to reality, while forcing space agencies around the world to acknowledge SpaceX's unmatched mastery of operating the largest spacecraft ever built with near-perfect precision. This test proved that the Raptor engine can reliably restart and operate under the extreme conditions of space. But here's something interesting. Why didn't they reignite a vacuum-optimized Raptor instead? The reason is simple. Starship is designed to re-enter and land on Earth, both of which require the use of sea-level Raptors for optimal performance in atmospheric conditions. By restarting a sea-level engine in space, SpaceX can gather valuable data on how it performs across both vacuum and atmospheric environments. This kind of progress shows how SpaceX never stops improving Starship after every flight. And one day, it's these small yet steady improvements that will help the vehicle finally set foot on Mars. And that fact became even clearer during Ship 38's re-entry, a sequence just as thrilling as the previous flight. 
Fiery red plasma streams began to wrap around the vehicle as it descended through 123 kilometers. And by 84 kilometers, the plasma had started licking against the stainless steel body. At that point, the heat was so intense it could have roasted a large chunk of meat in seconds. At T plus 52 minutes, the plasma near the tail turned purple, a mesmerizing mix of ionized nitrogen and other particles, creating that signature violet-pink hue. It's a beautiful sight, but that glow means temperatures soaring between 5,000 and 10,000 degrees Celsius. Just imagine the brutal environment those ceramic heat tiles had to endure to keep the ship safe. At T plus 58 minutes, the vehicle began rotating into an almost perfectly vertical orientation. It might have looked ordinary, but this was actually a crucial test. As SpaceX confirmed on X, Starship is executing a banking maneuver that mimics the final approach it would take while returning to Starbase for a catch on a future mission. The spacecraft maintained its structural integrity, plunging downward at nearly one kilometer every 10 seconds without any additional issues. As it neared the surface, the vehicle began to shake violently. Then, at just 300 meters above the ocean, it flipped belly down, reignited two Raptor engines, and executed a near-perfect landing burn, gently touching the water. Moments later, it tilted to one side and exploded into a fiery blast over the sea. After the flight, SpaceX quickly released the official post-mission update. As for Ship 38, it achieved its target velocity and suborbital trajectory. Beyond confirming the successful Starlink deployment, SpaceX stated that Starship re-entered Earth's atmosphere and gathered extensive data on heat shield performance as it was intentionally stressed to test the vehicle's limits. During the final minutes of the 58-minute flight, as we witnessed, Starship performed a controlled banking maneuver to simulate the return trajectory it will follow on future missions back to Starbase. It then autonomously guided itself using its four aerodynamic flaps toward a designated splashdown site in the Indian Ocean executing a flawless flip maneuver, a precise landing burn, and a soft touchdown, a perfect ending to a near-perfect flight.